Hello, folks. I'm Pete Smith for Act Sing L I V. Yes, coming this uh, this month, June and July on Saturdays. Um, now, there's no mistake why it's called Act Sing L I V, because uh, L I V is short for live. It also means Long Island Village, but. I like to think of it as act, sing, live. Because, guys, I got to tell you, for me, acting in many ways saved my life. Uh, I started acting when I was about 40 years old. Now, I know that's kind of an older time to start, although nothing is ever too late to start. But yes, when I turned 40, uh, it was right after 9-11. Uh, and something changed in me. I felt a need to really let my emotions out. I was on the fire department at that time, and you know, I had just watched 9-11, like everybody else that was around at that time. I, but I saw 343 firefighters die in one shot, just like that, and uh, I wasn't that far away in New Jersey when it happened, and well, it got me thinking about my life and about uh, being a fireman and also just about being a human being, and I really felt the need to explore some uh, explore myself, what's inside, what's, what's emotionally, you know, things had been stirred up and I needed to get them out. And uh, That's when I first took my first acting lesson in New York City, HB Studio. Uh, speaking of HB Studio, uh, this book, Uta Hagen, this was my, really my first, actually my second acting book that I bought. But this contains all of the uh, Uta Hagen's exercises on acting techniques. And if you come to the uh, Saturday classes, you'll be allowed to uh, take this book and, and read it. Uh, you can borrow it from me. I have two of these. And uh, this contains the exercises on how to learn acting techniques. Because you know we, we tend to think like we can't do it because we don't know. We've never done it. We're afraid. We get stage fright. Uh, we don't know how to memorize lines. Of course, we don't know any of that stuff until we learn technique. It's like anything. A doctor doesn't go in there and, and start performing surgery without learning, go through many, many years of school. Well, same with an actor. You don't just get up there and do it. Well, sometimes you do, and you can learn that way, but this is a great resource. There's exercises in here for, for learning acting techniques, and you can explore those if you come to the class. I've got some other books. This was the first book I ever bought, An Actor Prepares by Konstantin Stanislavski. Now, this guy really hit home for me when the things he says in this book about acting and about life and uh, really finding what's inside of you. See, acting is about taking on another life through a role. And so you can explore all of those things you wanted to do, you know? You wanted to be the bad guy. You wanted to be the good guy, the hero. Uh, you wanted uh, the love, you know, from the family or from the from the uh, relationship, you know, um, you experience loss, you experience gain, you, you see the world. When you're an actor, you can see the world in different perspectives through somebody else's words, somebody else's perspective, someone else's life, and find that in yourself because we have all of this in ourselves. I learned a long time ago, we're not locked in. We think we, we are a certain way, but we're really not. And we all we contain all the good, bad, and ugly inside of ourselves, all of it. And that's the joy of acting, is finding those, uh, finding those different parts of ourself and, and expressing that through a role in your way, your own way, not somebody else's way, your way. This is a great book, Auditioning for Musical Theater. Fred Silver, fantastic, teaches you about musical theater. We, we can sing in this class. We, I can help coach you through singing, getting up in front of an audience and singing a musical theater song. Um, you're welcome to borrow any of these books. Audition by Michael Shirtliff, uh, great book. Michael is big on uh, uh, helping you to be unique. Be who you are. Explore who you, the, the characteristics, the uniqueness of yourself. Because you'll hear it all the time, casting directors say, when is somebody going to show me something different? So many people come in on, on auditions and just do the same thing over and over, and they want, 
somebody to come in and show them different. Well, who's different? You're different. That's the key, you see. If you can take a role and internalize it and express it the way you see it, the way you would do it, that's more important than trying to be, you know, uh, 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 you know, a great uh, actor. Um, just be yourself. Be your own actor. Now, this is uh, the war of art. You're welcome to borrow this one. This is break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. This is great. All about being creative and allowing yourself to create. Uh, it, you'd think it's the art of war, right? Very famous book about war, but this is the war of art, how to express yourself. Great book by uh, Stephen Pressfield. Uh, this book is good. Tony Barr, Acting for the Camera, because, you know, acting in theater and, and on TV, television, on camera, film, very different. Uh, on television and film, they can do close-ups. They can do very soft speaking. They can do very s subtle movements in the face, in the eyes. Um, and it's very intimate, very close. And they can also edit and do different takes and you know, add a lot of different things through editing. So there's really a lot different about acting on film. And then when you're doing a scene a lot of times on film or TV, you know, you have to kind of repeat it and know mechanically what you did the last time so that they can edit it and it doesn't look funny, you know, like a guy's drinking a glass in one minute and then the next thing you know is like this and you're like, and then the next scene is like this again. And anyway, that's like a mechanical thing, part of uh, acting for the camera, but it's very different. Then theater, you know, you have to be able to let the person in the back row at 300 feet away has to be able to see and understand and get the message of what you're doing on stage, this little person. So you have to be bigger, you know? And so it's very different. And it's all on theater. You're only getting that one shot. It's live, you know? So you're not editing. Very different, but just joyful, just the same. Uh, this is the actor's scene book. This has monologues and scene work, uh, uh, monologues for men, monologues for women, scenes for two men, two women and a man and a woman, whatever. Lots of scenes and monologues in here, great resource. You're welcome to borrow it. Oh, what's this in here? Let's see, got notes in here from way back. It's easier to point out ways in which we could better play someone else's part rather than better ways to play our own. <laughs> Keep focused on yourself. Yes, it's much easier to point out somebody else's flaws than our own, right? Again, my favorite book, the first one I ever bought, An Actor Prepares by Konstantin Stanislavski. It's just a different, uh, it's a hardcover. Oh, did you ever think about becoming a stage manager? I was a stage manager. That's actually how I got into acting. I was uh, producing a CD and I was at the printers and I ran into a guy, his name is Bill Yates, God rest his soul, and his wife Peggy Yates, and, and they have nine kids. And they, were, they had their own musical theater company out of East Orange, New Jersey, Yates Musical Theater. And I ran into Bill at the printing shop, and he said, yeah, we're kind of looking for a stage manager if you're interested. And I thought, huh, that sounds like something I would like to do. And that's how I got familiar with stage and acting and you know, seeing the show from behind and uh, more running the, the lights and the, the scenes and changing sets. And, and then I decided after that, oh, I wanted to get out there and be in front of the audience. But this is a great resource if you're interested in stage managing. There's a lot more to it than just you know, uh, cleaning up and, and uh, making sure that there's enough uh, snacks. Uh, Truth by Susan Batson. Very good book, very good. Susan is all about being truthful, internally truthful. This is the kind of acting I love personas, needs, and flaws in the art of building, char building actors and creating characters. Introduction by Nicole Kidman. Wonderful book. And she, again, is much like Uta Hagen, being truthful, especially on stage, but always, stage or film, being truthful. What does that mean, being truthful? Well, Spencer Tracy once said uh, something, it's fine to act as long as you don't get caught doing it, <laughs> which means you don't want to look like you're acting. You don't want people to say, oh, he's acting. You want to actually live in that moment as that character. So people believe that you're that character in that moment. And in order to do that, you really have to connect with some truth inside of you. 
So the key is to take what's happening to the character and internalize it so that you, how would you react? How would you do it? You know, because acting is reacting. It's your reaction and, and how you handle things, how you would say things. What would you do? And it becomes, it becomes a lifetime of watching, watching what people do, watching how people behave in certain situations, when they're on the bus, when they're on the subway, when they're walking down the street, walking their dog, when they're confronted, when they're surprised, when they sneeze, when they cough, when they stub their toe, when they can't find their car keys. All these things are part of being an actor and you learn as an actor to go through life watching, watching people and watching situations and how they behave and you say, oh, yes. Because in addition to being internalized and the, the actor going through something, there also needs to be a mechanical side of you that understands that people behave in a certain way under certain conditions, okay? This is another book, Acting Monologues. If, if there's any kids out there that are gonna come to the kids' classes, Acting Monologues and Scenes for Kids by Bo Kane. Yes, a very terrific book. It's got filled with scenes and uh, monologues for kids that want to explore acting. And uh, it's very, very good. You're welcome to borrow that if you're a kid. Um, oh, if you're planning on, um, the Camille just announced their um, season coming up next season. And one of the th shows is A Christmas Carol. If you're thinking of auditioning, don't audition for Scrooge, because that's the one I'm auditioning for. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, actually, I'm not. But A Christmas Carol, this is a great uh, story if you want to get in touch with this so that when you audition, you're ahead of the game and you do a great audition. I have a copy of The Christmas Carol, which you're welcome to borrow, and we can explore that in class. In the class, see, depending how many people show up, uh, you're going to get five or ten minutes to perform, do your monologue, do a scene, do a reading, do a speech, do a song. Um, and I'll coach you through it, and then you can do it again after some coaching and see if anything changes for you. And uh, it'll give you a chance to become comfortable just getting up and doing something in front of other people. Even if that other person is just me and a few other people that are trying to learn, it's gonna be really super helpful for you, and there's no pressure to perform good. It's just the only pressure is like, just get over the fear and just get up and do it, and I can coach you to do that. Uh, so, you want to sing music theater. You know, musical theater is a whole nother ball game. I mean, I was a musician before I started acting. I was a songwriter, played guitar, had a band, uh, performed, and I thought, well, I could just, I could do acting because uh, I can get up in front of people and sing, but it was totally different. And singing musical theater is a way to combine singing with acting, and it's, it's, it's very, very fun and very exciting. Um, it's a different ball game because for singing in musical theater, you don't have as much dialogue um, as you would in a, what they call a legitimate play or straight play, a drama or comedy without music. Um, so you actually have to do more in your music to convey the character than you do sometimes in straight acting because you just don't have the dialogue. The dialogue's in the song, a lot of it. So. This is a great resource uh, by Karen Hall. Welcome to borrow any of these. Oh, look at this, How They Cast It. This, I love this book. I, I, I'm always curious how a ca why and how a casting director pick certain actors for certain roles. And it, in this book, it just goes through a whole bunch of different like TV shows and movies and things that they chose certain actors for um, and why they chose it, you know? And, and I just love hearing that, what the actor did differently or what happened during the audition that made the casting director said, whoa, wow, that's, that's unique or that's perfect, you know? And what the actor did or didn't do or, or the weird things that happened, because a lot of times, you know, with acting, and it, the greatest things that happen are the ones that are unplanned, you know? It's a lot like life, how you react to things. And when you're auditioning or you're on stage or even, you know, when the film is rolling and, and you know, you're acting and something happens. I remember this one scene in The Outsiders. Um, 
uh, I think it's Emilio Estevez, his, his hat blows off or something. Or no, somebody on the crew, their hat blew off and, and went into the scene. And he grabbed it, he saw it coming by, and he grabbed it and put it on in the scene, and they kept it, you know? They're like, oh, that's awesome, because that's what you would do normally. So I love those things, and so do, of course, casting directors and the audience, you know, when you're on stage and something happens that's unexpected, and the actor uses it in the show and doesn't miss a beat, it's golden. Okay, Uta Hagen, of course, like I mentioned, that's another copy of uh, Challenge for the Actor. Again, the exercises in here, you can, I can help you work through the exercises. You can get up and do the exercises. They're very simple. Like one of them is uh, you lost something. And so you get up and you pretend that you can't find your car keys or uh, you can't find your wallet. And you walk around, what would you do? How, how do you behave when you can't find something? Because we have a way. It's not just, it's not random. People do certain things in certain situations. And so, her, her exercises are just helping you to become comfortable in your own skin, on stage, having personal moments in public. That's what it is. Having personal moments in public, in front of an audience. Being able to do that, it's just, and it's very, very rewarding to do that, believe it or not. Now here, oh, back to the Camille, Into the Woods. I have a copy of Into the Woods. This has all the, all the, uh, the book and the lyrics as well for the songs, and you're welcome to borrow this if you want to, if you're going to be auditioning for the Camille's Into the Woods this year, this might be helpful. We can work on something from there for your audition. We can get one of the songs and work on that. And another copy of Christmas Carol, uh, which you're welcome to borrow. So what else can I tell you? I think that's about it. Um, I, I don't want to make this too long. It's probably too long already. If, if you're still with me, then that means you're interested. So think about coming by. Um, I ask that you email me, actingpete at gmail.com, because um, to get into this place, Long Island Village, you need to go through a visitor's gate. And I'll give you the code for that. So I need to know that you're coming. And also, I want to know what you'd like to work on so I can prepare for that and help you out to tell you to what to prepare, how to prepare it, even if it's just a simple song or um, you know, a monologue, or you want to do a speech, or you got a wedding coming up where you're going to be the best man, or you know, um, you got to give a speech at, at a dinner for work or something, and you want want to be able to do that, you know, confidently in front of an audience. I can help you with that. I can coach you through that. Auditioning. I've been through so many auditions. I can help you. I've been uh, over a thousand auditions in New York City for Broadway shows. Never got the Broadway show. But that doesn't mean I can't help you because I can. I can tell you, I can tell you why I never got a Broadway show for the most part. I mean, sometimes it's just you're not, you're just not right, and that's there's nothing you can do about it. But now looking back, I can see there was a couple of big glaring things that really held me back from from getting hired for Broadway, and I can tell you what those are. So, if you'd like to know, please feel free to come to our class. And you don't have to do anything. If you want to come by and just sit and listen, you can. And maybe you just want to, you know, introduce yourself and listen. That's fine. Uh, you're welcome to come. Just let me know you're coming. Oh, our first, we're going to have special guests each week, hopefully. But our first week, we're having Ray Stewart. Now, Ray has had Broadway experience. He's been in like seven Broadway shows. So this is a real resource. And he's right from our area. He grew up, I believe, in Los Fresnos. Oh, no, Los well, is it Los Fresnos? Not Los Fresnos. What's the other one? Uh, Los Fritos? No, it's not Los Fritos. <laughs> anyway, very close to here. Maybe San Benito. I don't know. But he's very close. And um, it may be Los Fresnos. Anyway, Ray will be here. He's had Broadway experience. He's been on TV. He's had some films. So we can listen to him, and, and he can help us too. He can coach us and, and help coach you and me. And, and uh, it'll just be a good time. So please, if you're considering, if you've gotten this long in this video, please come. Uh, again, it's Act, Sing, Live, L-I-V, Long Island Village. That's every Saturday in June and July. It's free. Uh, it's going to be children from uh, 12 o'clock to 1.30, and then adults from 1.45 to 3, give or take. I mean, we can go longer if we need to. Um, but figure on, you know, 
five or 10 minutes per person, getting up in front of people and you know, let it, sharing your, your, your creativity and being vulnerable for a few minutes. And um, help, let us help coach you, I'll help coach you, and whoever my guests are will help coach you, and then you can do it again, and then maybe work on it during the week and come back the next week and try it again. As many as, as you wanna come to. That's every Saturday in June and July. Uh, email me, actingpete at gmail.com. And this is co-sponsored by the El Paseo Arts Foundation, which is our theater company over here on South Padre Island. We do shows from October till April, I believe. Uh, May, actually, we went this year. And uh, we're always looking for new people. So this is a great way to meet people, too, from El Paseo and uh, maybe be in the next show. Oh, before I forget, let me show you the, uh, let me show you the studio here that we have. So this is the... Uh, what they call the owner's lounge in LIV. It's the, it's the upstairs. Uh, we've got these beautiful, beautiful, let me see if I can, yeah. We've got these beautiful windows uh, overlooking this, this uh, studio. And it's got a nice big open space and a uh, big mirror back here with some, some ballet bars too. Not that we're gonna be doing any ballet, but uh, it's just a nice, nice open space comfortable, got air conditioning, fans, and uh, yeah, so this is the, the place where we're going to be holding our classes. All right. Okay, that's about it for me. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I'm Pete Smith, Act Sing L-I-V. Think you with self-expressed.